Now I'm ready. Are you? Okay, come in, come in, come in. Yes, Scott. I'm ready. about this we obviously need muscles to I carry it for any great length of time and um, whilst I love using this at weddings for some post shots my main usage the other the biggest stretch of time that I use it for is during um, speeches and that type of thing just so that you can get people's reactions from outside really but if there's a if there's a good range yeah, and you don't have to be in in the face for it. I think the fact that you can get it at two point eight from a distance allows you to get some really good reactions, and it doesn't distract from what's going on in the background. Yeah, yeah it's and, and it's nice and uh, like you say, with it being two point eight, lets a lot of light in, so it's good when it's it's quite low light. Good for you know, getting some reps in. If, you, yeah. if you've just got a few spare minutes, you can uh, oh, yeah. do some some curls with it. And, yeah, it's good. You know, but uh, yeah, especially if you dropped it there, it would. Which uh, I actually dropped mine. Oh, did you? I've, I've got mine a few times. Yeah. Luckily, I were on. I was stood on some quite soft grass, but when I uh, when I picked it back up, the um, the end where the mount is, where you attach it to the camera, it will literally it will like full of grass. Uh, it looked like it looked like I were growing something out of it. Yeah, yeah. but it it cleaned up all right. It cleaned up really good. well. I felt quite. Uh, you feel quite safe when you're carrying that lens around as well. Oh uh, yeah. You don't, you don't feel like anybody's gonna anybody's gonna mess yeah, with. Yeah, see what you mean. There, you've got a good grip on it. Yeah. It can so do, it I'd damage. I'd taken three pictures. I took one inside. And I've taken two outside just to give a bit of a contrast between taking something relatively close up and then taking something kind of unexpected whilst going out. So I'll show you my stuff now and then you can show me yours. And if you like your you, you, you show me yours and I'll show you mine. <laughs> it sounds good. Light speed activated. So I've just done this school run and um, it's time to put the 72 200 uh, lens through its paces. Scott's going to be doing the same, we're just going to be taking two or three pictures just to show, uh, in our opinion, what the uh, strong points are. So I'm going to visually show you these, but just to talk about it for a, a moment uh, the there's three parts for me which are the best and um, the first one is the focal length so the focal length is no surprise 70 to 200 and um, with regard to the um, the advantage of that means that especially if you're doing weddings you don't need to be in anybody's face you can take close-up pictures from a distance and it works really good um, the other advantage that I find with it is that the lens that I've got is 2.8 that's the aperture or the f-stop and what that means is in low light situations so if you're doing uh, if you're doing a wedding in the church and you've got you can't use a flash or anything like that you've got a fighting chance to get some decent light with a, a low aperture which means that the it's open wide and it lets as much light in um, and then the the third part of of this is the, the other thing i like about this lens is the fact that at 2.8 you've got a really good depth of field 
Um, and what that means is that um, if you want to take a picture of a specific subject, you can get some really good um, detail on the subject that you want to take and all the background is uh, blurred out if you, if you want to focus on I mean for instance I use this lens for um, speeches simply because you can get their facial expressions of the guests laughing surprise faces and I mentioned this in a previous video which I put the um, the link up here um, and it doesn't get distracted by what's in the background because it gives a nice blurred out or bokeh effect and um, it's quite good so I've just pulled up here and all I'm gonna do is take a few shots here so let's have a look what's going on <laughs> This is what I'm looking to capture. individual strand of grass in this field and it's focusing on the grass but it's blurred out the whole background which looks very nice
So I'm just going to take my 70 to 200 out for a bit of a walk and see if there's anything interesting that I can find to take photos of. So I've just come out to um, do my little video and it started raining. <laughs> so I'm currently hiding under a bridge. Um, if it stops then I'll be able to show you what I intended to show you which was what I like about the 70 to 200 2.8 lens so fingers crossed otherwise i'm going to be running back home okay so i do have to confess it wasn't as bad as this at the time um, this is from about a week ago when it was hailing but it looks really cool so i just thought i'd include it I did manage to get a couple of shots before the downpour and um, nothing fancy but hopefully you'll get to see the difference between the, the extremes of the focal range so you've got a um, 70mm coming up first which is this one here and then followed by 200mm stood from exactly the same spot using exactly the same settings um, just so you get to see the difference again 70 mil on this one and then 200 millimeters do you ever consider buying the f4 rather than the f2.8 no I love the so fact I, that it's 2.8. I did. Um, I've never bought it, but I did. I did actually consider it for about two weeks I'll, because what? it is quite a lot cheaper. Uh, is that is that the reason then? It's cheaper. Yeah, because I, I wanted that range. I wanted the seventy to two hundred range, but you know, I think I think when I got mine, what are you looking at? I think it was 1,500 quid, something like that. All right. And uh, I think the, F, the F4 versions may be 800, something like that. So right. there's a big difference in price. But I'm so happy that I got the 2.8 because I use it, you know, I use it at gigs when I'm in yeah. photo pit. You get some good reach on it. I, I'll use it at weddings, like you say. It's brilliant for speeches because yeah. you can... And even in church, you can stand you far back, can't you? Uh, in yeah. churches when you're not allowed to have flash um that extra couple of notches down on the aperture makes um life real easy one of my first lenses that i got was a 70 to 300 uh was it a nikon or i can't remember what it was now but it, it was garbage because you would start off at 4.5 i think it was at 300 and by the time you got to um to the 70, oh sorry, by the, it was, um, I'm trying to think which way around it was now. So it went from 4.5 up to 6.5 or seven or something like that, which is impossible to actually take any decent pictures unless you've got really good sunlight outside. An 80 to 200 and it's 4.5 to 5.6 but I think anything past about 100 
and you were straight up at, at 5.6. Yeah. And it's uh, gash. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I used, I used um, the 70 to 300 for a couple of important shots back in the day when I, when I had it. And I got home and just looking at the noise on it that I had to uh, try and crank, crank it up. It right, so. Yeah, I was, I was desperate to try and get some kind of light. But this one, um, I, you know, if need be, I could shoot a full wedding with this, apart from probably the group shot where you need to. Yeah. I, I, I suppose I could stand a good half a mile away and, and then get the groups. All right. I think it, yeah, I think it's probably my most used lens. Or, yeah. or actually do it as a as a a, a panoramic shot and just make sure just make everybody to freeze or blink. Um. So next week, um, we're gonna have a challenge, and uh, there's three options that you need to pick. You probably see them on social media. Uh, pick the wood which you want us to try, and then we will do it the following week. Um, you've got three choices. And uh, see how creative it can be. Yeah? yeah, why not? Let's give it a go. It'll, uh, if, if nothing else, it'll get us to use as gear that we're probably not using as much as yeah, we'd like to use what? right now anyway. So I might use them um, good, good. gels that I got today. They're not actually gels, they're kind of strips that go around it and you've got a band over them. So it's not like yeah. yours. It's not like yours. No, it's same. Hey? Same as mine. Uh, this, this, is, this is what I've got. And you've got, got your little oh, right, band yeah. that, that goes over your flash. Yeah. And then you've got a pack of, pack of gels. Oh, yeah. And they're all sort, sorted out by different oh, yes, colours um, or yeah. effects, yeah. I assumed that you had those where they got the grids on them. Oh no, no! So you could, you could get them, them, couldn't you? you? Could you could use that and then put like a, a grid over the top of it if you wanted to. Yeah. Like you might uh, mag mod. But no, these are. I've, I've, as I say, I've had them years and rarely use them, but they're uh, they're pretty they're pretty decent. I mean, things you can make your own, can't you? A quality street wrappers, really, if you're yeah, desperate. Yeah. I used to make my own cups out of quality street wrappers. Kind of put it over your finger and then twist it over and you'd have a nice little wine glass when you'd finished. Oh yeah, I'm gonna have to have a play about with these.